Welcome to Edwards. My name is Daisha. I am a floral designer over in the flower department at Edwards. We have, in case you've never been there, a full service uh, flower shop over there. We're open year round and do deliveries and all of that sort of thing. Today we're going to do this class from um, the greenhouse with all the poinsettias. They're so fabulous and beautiful. We thought it would be nice to share it with all of you. So I am sad that we can't be together this year. I love teaching this class every year. It's one of my favorites. Um, I hope you all will do it from home and um, continue to express yourselves creatively. And then uh, as soon as we can, we'll be back together in person at the greenhouse. So we're gonna just jump right in. So you're going to be getting a bundle of red twig dogwood. And um, it's fresh, so it's, uh, pliable uh, when you get the top the dogwood so say you get this um, at home and you're not going to make it for a couple of days go ahead and put this in a bucket of water so it stays nice and fresh okay so you're going to get your dogwood out and kind of start to just warm it up and bend it like this like I like to do it first before I really start to try to form the wreath especially towards the thicker end where it's cut. So just form it like that. I'm going to do that to, to two to begin with. And then um, the others you can do while you're holding your form. So just gently, you don't want to just apply so much pressure that you break it, but um, enough pressure to get it sort of going in the direction that you Okay, so uh, once I've accomplished that, I'm going to start holding it in one spot. You're going to um, kind of decide about how big you want your wreath form to be um, within the restraints of the length of your dogwood. But, um, you know, the greens will be coming out this way, so the wreath will be larger than the exact circle that you make, so kind of keep that in mind. So I've got that piece right there, and I'm going to go ahead and take, you'll be getting a little bundle of um, bind wire. It's just a little paper-covered wire. Oops. And uh, yours will be a dark color. I'm going to use this light color for the sake of our video so you can see it better and see what I'm up to. So you're just going to take the bind wire and wrap it around a few times. And this will all be covered, so it doesn't matter. You can see the wire at the moment. Just like that. And um, we may cut off the end of that by the time this is all done. Okay, and then with your second piece, going in the opposite direction of the larger piece, just kind of hold it right there at that same spot. And here's where I'll kind of bind it through, like we're going to twist it around the original one. Right up here. And don't worry about all the little stragglers. Those are going to be part of our design. So I'm going to go ahead and um, use another piece of bind wire to connect these two. Try and get that a little more stable. Oh, it's right there. It is critical that you bind it really tightly. So take a minute to do that if you can. And I'm not going to worry about cutting the little ends just yet. They're fine the way they are. So you, you may not necessarily make a perfect circle, but that's pretty close. Um, and then you'll have some other smaller bits too. Probably four or five total. So I'm going to go ahead and with that around the same area and again just going around and around like that. I think I'll take one from the other direction. Go 
go around all of them this time. I lost one piece out of there, but I don't, I don't think I actually need it. So. And then you can kind of tuck these little wild ones in or leave them out if you prefer. So everybody will have sort of a different idea of what looks nice to them. So there we have a wreath form. So you could do this with um, grapevine um, before it freezes in the fall. You could do this with willow, uh, red twig dogwood. There's other. There are other types of dogwood that this this would work. Well, this technique would work well with. So I, you can cut the fat ends if you don't get them tucked nicely, but I feel like that's that's actually pretty good. And this is going to be the top of my wreath. Anyway. So we're going to cover part of this with greens and leave part of it exposed because I think the red twig is really beautiful. I'm going to just move these spares out of my way and we'll get started doing that. So when you get your kit, you're going to get um, a variety of pine cones and just set those aside for later. Decide where the top of your wreath is. So the example I'm going to show you, we're going to do just one asymmetrical um, wreath with the greens coming down on either side, but you could very easily choose to cover half of your wreath and do something kind of asymmetrical or whatever. That's, that's up to you um, creatively. So you may get some juniper. Um, not every kit will have all the exact same greens, but every kit will have a nice variety of greens and textures for, to use, for you to use. So there's juniper, um, there's cedar, um, princess pine, and oh, some spruce. So I like to work kind of in threes when we do this. So you're gonna get your clippers. So I'll show you kind of my process for cutting the greens so I get the most use out of the branch of evergreen. So sometimes it's easier to see from the back than it is the front to see where all the various spines are. So I like to start at the bottom and just cut near the main branch piece. And we're looking for pieces that are about um, four to six inches in length, about. So we don't want huge pieces. Cut those like that. So like. If I were to come in and just start cutting the tips off of all of these, you would sort of miss part of the foliage that, and you want to use all of it. This larger piece I might want to cut into two. If I cut it right at the bracket right here, I can still use both those pieces. Okay, so you'll pre-cut some each of your greens up and put them in little piles so you can work that. So here's the cedar. Again, you're going to start at the bottom and cut and you don't want two larger pieces. So this guy I'll cut like this that has a couple of them rather than individually. Here's another example of one where this is really too long of a piece, so I'm gonna I want to use all the utilize the whole uh, green, so I'm gonna cut it right here at the knot, right next to where the, the growth comes out. And then when we go to layer these, if there happens to be a little cut end, you'll simply layer um, a piece of greenery that would cover that, so that you don't see the little cut ends. Here's those. So really, I am using every last bit of this um, greenery. So there's very little waste involved. That, and then we'll do some princess pine. So again, right at the node, 
stitch there. Cut that little piece. So this stick would do nothing for a wreath. So I'm going to cut that off. And go down a little further to get the piece that I actually want. So a piece that's really long like this, I might also come in about halfway and pull the, the needles back a smidge and go that route. As you can see as that lies down, you can't tell that it was necessarily the bottom half of the princess pine. A little more of that. So um, when you get your wreath done, I'll just talk a little bit about care while I finish cutting this. Um, your wreath will, if you hang it outside where it's nice and cool this time of year, will last until Valentine's Day. If, however, you hang it um, in your house, it's going to dry out like in a week's time, very quickly. So hang it outside um, and you'll have it all the way through winter. And if you have something very, very Christmassy on it, you could remove that after the holiday and still enjoy it as a wintry wreath. Okay, so we have our greens prepped, ready to go. And we have our wreath form ready to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and start um, putting, applying these to the wreath form. Let's see if I can move this so it's easiest to see. Okay, so your kit will come with all green um, chenilles or pipe cleaners, um, but today I'm going to do this um, tutorial with red so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm just going to start layering the pieces. Like that. And the three pieces are perfect. You can see it makes a really beautiful little um, so this is going to be the part that's tricky for some of you. Everybody's instinct when making this wreath is to start here and move down, and you have to do opposite of that. So you have to decide about how far you want your foliage to come down and start there rather than up here, because we have to be able to hide our work. So looking at mine, I think I want my foliage to come right about there. So I'm going to go ahead and lay it on the form and take the pipe cleaner and wrap it around nice and tight and give it a twist. And that's all there is to it. When we're all done, we'll come through and clip all these, but um, I just leave them here at the moment because if you see a bare spot or something, often you can reuse the same wires to add more as we go. So that's the first clump you can see added there top being here, and then um, it's essential that you go in one direction until you reach the middle, and then stop and go in the other direction until you uh, reach the middle. Okay, so next bundle. Okay, so I'm going to lay this bundle right on top of the other one, like that, and therefore cover up the, the work. Can you see that? The work that I did with the wire. So I'm going to lay it over top and take the. So when I'm applying the pipe cleaner, um, if there's some nice poofy greens, I'll kind of slip this under so I don't um, restrict all the greens. I want them to still look. There we go, and around and around, just twisting nice and tight. So check yourself, this shouldn't go anywhere when you shake it. Make, don't go any further without kind of testing to make sure, because you get this up on your door, right, and then people are coming in and out, and there's wind and all that sort of thing, and we don't want um, stuff flopping all over. Okay, so that's good and firm. And you can see my pipe cleaners because they're red, but you can also see that if they were green, you would already not see anything at all. Okay, so you just keep going like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll talk about how to um, end it when you get the other side done.
easily gets me to the center, and that took four bundles. So, not too tricky. Okay, then um, when you begin the other side, again, you have to start down here and come up. So something to note, you don't want to add your wire clear up here. I, you'll notice I'm, I'm applying the wire at least a couple inches, like an inch and a half, two inches down um, from the start of the bundle. And that's because I don't want it to slip out or flop about. Okay. Bundling, um, if I have an option to go to have the piece go this way with the curve of the wreath or this way, my my instinct is to go this way personally. Kind of have them all um, going in the same direction. to check with yourself to see if you're even or wild pieces that need to add. If you had a, a spot where it was bare, you could easily add in another piece. But generally speaking, I think that looks really nice. So we'll go with that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, decorate the wreath a little bit. We have pine cones. So, the way you attach the pine cone is to take your chenille and literally just sneak it in between the pinion flower and twist it like that. So, this is red, so you can see it. But when this is green, you won't see it. It'll just disappear completely. And then you have these handy dandy little tails to attach it to your wreath wherever you like. So typically I like to kind of um, make, make a little space, lift up a little, like, I don't like to stick it right on top. That, that feels like a little obvious, right? So we want to make this look like perhaps the pine cones actually grew on these pine boughs. So the way to do that is to lift the, green, the greenery up a little and sneak the pine cone underneath and then simply go all the way around the entire form and twist your wires like that so it appears to be sort of part of the greenery okay and so it's up to you you can do them very evenly or a little more sporadically or grouped or you could do them all up at the top uh, those are all your creative decisions to make, so you just follow your heart. I'm going to go ahead and just um, do some in what I feel like would be 
the way they would grow naturally. So again, just slip right through there, and it doesn't have to be the very top one, just get as close as you can and then pull it tight. Um, you shouldn't, most of these greens are not too pokey, but we will be sending a little pair of soft gloves um, to put on that you can that you can work easily and nimbly with your fingers, but um, will protect you from sap and pokey stuff. And the pine cones can be a little pokey too. And I'm just for the sake of this tutorial doing it without gloves, so you can really see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'll give him a little friend. This is a, just another area where you want to be careful not to pin down all of your greens and make them flat. You want to continue having them look nice and fluffy. There's that. I'm going to do a little a third one right up here. So, you know, the two sides of the pine cone are different as well, and you, if you wanted, you could attach one going that way. I'm going to keep mine all going this way. Okay. And then some on the other side as well. as many or as few pine cones as you like and then we'll talk about bows and how to hang them. Okay. So let's see we have that. We're getting closer and let me show you the back see all of our work back there and like I said when you're done you can go through and clip those all. Okay let's talk ribbon. So if you don't want any ribbon you could just have even more pine cones up here and totally go ribbonless if you prefer. If you want a bow I'll show you how we're going to do I prefer just a really simple, no funny business kind of bow. Um, if you prefer a floofier bow, you'll have plenty of ribbon to do so. Um, I think what I like best is to decide about how long I like my tails to be. About like that. I'm going to cut this ribbon here. And then I'm going to take the other piece. with the first piece, okay, so they're like this. I'll take the longer of the two and use that to attach and tie the bow on the wreath form. So you could do this if you want with chenille. I'm gonna go right around the whole wreath form. Keeping, keeping in mind too, like, um, I can see my little red wires up here a smidge. You won't see them if you have your green chenilles. Okay, and I am literally just tying a bow like when you learn to tie with bunny ears uh, when you're a kid. Two bunny ears and right around. And there we go. 
bring those tails down. So you can pull on the tails to adjust the loop to get it just exactly where you want it. Clean up some of these little red wires so that we can check it out. So if you um, want, you can add a hook with the chenille to your wreath form. Although this should fit, it's not a fat wreath. It should fit right on a, a, like the typical a door wreath hook that you have already. If you don't have a hook at all on your door and your door is wood, you can take a, a flat thumb tack, like a brass tack, and a piece of your ribbon and um, run it through as I've done here and then tack it flat on the top of your door so it will hang down and then that doesn't damage your door in any way. You don't have to put a hole in it. So that's, a, that's one good option you can do. Okay. Two of these away. Okay, pretty happy with that. So here's one with a white bow that we did just now, and I have another one I can show you that I did. Um, oh, it looks good. This one kind of smidge bigger. So each and every wreath will be will be different and unique to you. Thanks everybody.